it's still worth it. I think it's still worth it. It's worth every cent. Um, and I wish we did it earlier. I wish we pushed harder to come earlier. It's so worth it. So, so worth it. And I would encourage anyone to come as soon as they can. I'm Dr. Shamanita Blanche, ex-corporate and academia girl, turned CEO and board member of several companies and mother of four little extraordinary kids. But it wasn't that long ago that I lacked the confidence, the know-how and the time to focus on designing and really going after the life that I so wanted to live. A life of freedom, of fairness and of being fair dinkum to who I really was and what I wanted to get out of this fleeting time that we have on Mother Earth. Fast forward to many lessons learned and moving halfway around the world to the most amazing country, you'll see the life that I now live. One that gives me more safety and freedom than I ever thought would be possible and that really only existed as a daydream while I was living in South Africa. I created Chamonix TV to give you true spot advice on how you can also live a life in this amazing country and so that you can see how another couple like us now live in Australia with four little kids here in Down Under and I'll be providing you with step by step strategies so that you can make your Aussie dream a reality too. If you're a keen future Aussie who's looking to create a life that excites you and offers you safety, freedom and opportunity, you have come to the right place my friend. Welcome aboard. Hi Monique, thank you so much for joining us. You're all the way from, I want to say sunny Melbourne, no, is it um, <laughs> cold Melbourne or is it lockdown Melbourne? Lockdown and very cloudy, very blue at this point. <laughs> Hi, Samuel. Thanks so much for joining us. So tell us your Australian story. How long have you been on this massive island and um, how did you guys come over? Um, we've come over about six years ago. Uh, yes, in October, it's, it's six years. Um, so I think we've decided long before that to come over, um, probably about five years before that, that we've actually yeah. decided to, to make the move. And it was before we even got married. Jaco and I, we, we, before we got married, we knew we wanted to come. And he actually came for a trial run and he got a job, et cetera, et cetera. And then um, that massive world financial crisis happened. And the company was an uh, American company. So they rejected the offer and they said, I'm so we're sorry, you know, oh, you can't goodness. come. And that was after him being here for three months already, you know, finding oh, wow. work, et cetera. So it, uh, that kind of smashed our dreams of coming. Mm. Um, and we did have the process of residential um, visas, et cetera, that started at that point. And we went and we did it through a company. But what we didn't know is that the person who was doing it was um, ill, very, very ill. Mm -hmm. And so what happened was our application kept on going to the bottom and we weren't really aware of it. So mm -hmm. our application itself took four years. <laughs> why, Larry, why? Yes, exactly. Well, this is why we found out afterwards um unfortunately and in those years that we got married and we then decided you know we're settling and we got dogs and then started with babies so, <laughs> so australia was very far in the in the back of our minds um at that point and then something happened in the media and it shook me a bit and um i said to my husband no i think i think we we need to go you know and then I checked our visas and that was uh I think it was a few months before it expired we did the initial trip of uh where you had to activate in that certain time frame mm, and then mm. go back you know we did all of that yeah um, but then before making that second time decision we um it, I think it was a few months like six seven months Mm. And then our visas would have expired if we didn't enter the country permanently. Mm. And yes, in that seven months, then I had to do my two daughters' visas 
which I did myself then. And I wish we did it earlier. I wish we pushed harder to come earlier so that um, we were here with all of their births, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, obviously, then you don't have your family on the other hand. Yeah, yeah. So how, you know, how, old, were the, kind of, how old were mm -hmm. the kids, your daughters, when, when you guys came over? Um, my, my youngest was 10 months. So wow. she was still a baby when we came and um, didn't have any support structure. My sister was here, but we, we lived on the Mornington Peninsula at that point. So she was like a 45 minute drive away from me. Um, but yes, so you walk in and you know no one, basically. And you've got a newborn. And it, I only think about it now, but it takes so much of you to make mm. that big move. You don't think about it when you are doing it. Mm. But, but it is a big move. And yeah. um, it takes a lot of you, mentally, mm. emotionally, everything, you know. Um, because I think as um, the wife in my situation, my husband was very lucky. He found work very quickly. Um, so he, we were here for a month and we came in end of October. So he got a job within a month. So we were lucky in that way, but we were settled in Mornington Peninsula, which is a fantastic um, section of Melbourne as well. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. I would have loved to live there, but my husband just didn't want to do the travel. You know, mm. he said to me, no, he needs to be closer. He was, do he was traveling, uh, I think, about two hours more a day, you oh, know, back, goodness, and, back wow. and forth to work. Um, so he said, no, he needs to be closer. And that's why we ended up moving closer, which is still mm. lovely. Um, mm. It is a bit less of that beachy feel, you know, that yeah. a slower, a mornings in Peninsula is, is a slower pace, which I love. But in any way, so yeah, that's how we came and how it all happened. And but I, I, it's so worth it, so so worth it. And I would encourage anyone to come as soon as they can. <laughs> so coming with a baby of ten months, and how old was your other daughter? Well, she was then three. Three. And what the a other brave one was mum. Five six. Yes, but I guess you just if once you once you make that choice, you you just need to go for it, and you have to completely be immerse yourself into it. You can't live like I was saying. You can't be here with one foot and the other foot in South Africa. You can't mm. do that. You mm. need to be here completely and immerse yourself into the culture and the people. And I must say, the people are fantastic. They are really. I remember I came for a visit to my sister um, in Australia uh, a few years before we immigrated and I was pregnant. Um, I always wanted to come and show her my babies, you know. So I was pregnant with, yeah, with my son. That was my first pregnancy. And I came and I remember, you know what? They had a baby shower here for me with people that I never, I've never met them. <laughs> And that's how welcoming they are, you know. Yeah. They were just like they welcome Aww. you with open arms, and I was just amazed with uh, how people are. Yeah, they are very yeah. um, loving and very open and very set in. Let's help the community. You mm. know, um, mm. I don't know if you've experienced that as well. One hundred percent. Absolutely. Yes. I, I, I also find them, they're open, they're warm, um, and they're, they're like genuine. They're yes. not pretentious. Yes. I don't get that pretentious feeling that sadly we find in South Africa very, very often. I think um, the difference for me is people are more aware of their, um, their social stance, I think. Whereas here, it's very, you know, that tall poppy syndrome. Mm. It's very, it's even playing field. People want to be seen the same. It doesn't yes. matter whether you are a, a plumber or uh, working in the parliament. You can live next to each exactly. other. Exactly. That's the thing. 
because you know because you live in the same because who you are as a person means more than what you do as a job exactly exactly mm-hmm. so i think here it's very much you are seen more as a person but then i must also see, say um because people do not have that history of you you are also mm-hmm one dimensional to them because they know you from the last year or whatever they didn't know you they don't have all that history so mm. sometimes i feel like a lot of it that depth is missing yeah, yeah because enough. because they they met you for who you are now and for me in for, for me um i'm a mum you know i'm a mum here so mostly that's how people know me as just a mum <laughs> um and and not all of what what makes you you so tell it's us a little only... bit about your background before becoming a mum did you work or are you working at the moment um i, I always i've i've um so now i you i used to do like a a part time job for a fashion a local fashion designer um australian fashion designer um and then last year with covid I decided now it's time for me to to do my own thing a bit again because I've always dabbled doing my own little things. <laughs> and um yeah, I started a jewelry brand which is called Tea with Wolves and um it's mostly online and um yeah, but I just also wanted a, a cre- creative outlet because I've always been very creative and since being here I did, I've not done nothing. I've done no mm. painting, not making anything, nothing. I've just done mum. That's all I've done. <laughs> so um so th- so that gives me a bit of that creative outlet as well, which yeah. is lovely. But um in South Africa I did um I owned my own yoga studio. And mm. um yes, yeah, so I basically started I used to be a teacher. Uh a prep teacher so grade north in south africa I used to be a grade north teacher in south africa and then doing the yoga on the side etc you know and that's how we came we came on my mm. teaching degree um mm. uh yeah so 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 that's how we came and that's how we applied because mm. i think i don't know if it still is but the teaching degrees are quite high on yes. the list of points mm. etc mm. but that's how it was and that's my husband was also a little bit older than me so i i got more points and just remind me again so you've got three children three kids i've got a son of 11 and mm-hmm. um, so he's year 5 and then i've got a daughter who's year 4 she is 9 and then the other one is 6 11 so she 6 okay so they're 11, all in school now although it's lockdown well so home school <laughs> <laughs> it's all home schooling um for this it's basically the second year of homeschooling because this started last year march about huh eh? so this is the second year of homeschooling um we've well, had now you're getting to live again. out being a teacher yes that is helping <laughs> but oh my word the patience you need so much patience and when it's your own kids i don't want to listen to you you know <laughs> yes um I, I had exactly that scenario this morning with my kids having to get them to school I, I know <laughs> yes yeah, so it's difficult but then I was looking because next week they are doing like a phased returning to school so next week my youngest one is allowed to go Thursday and Friday I think covid has hung around long enough in Melbourne in the lockdown sense so it's I'm so eager for everybody to move on and they're going to open up the borders soon hopefully you guys will have yes. open borders long before we have open borders here in perth because our premier said not until we've got a 90% vaccin- vaccination rate and um, double vaccine it's like mm, we're at 50% so anyway yeah i want to talk a little bit more about your business because i have to tell you oh. you wouldn't know this i have been what's the word um looking at your beautiful jewelry design oh. pieces oh. probably every week i go on the website and i'm like oh, oh. drooling over them beautiful oh i love your pieces oh. it's so gorgeous and i see you've got some of your earrings on as well oh yeah. so beautiful my wild wild irises 
Um, it is absolutely gorgeous. So tell us a bit more about how you how you how you design and where do you have it made if you don't mind a little bit about that process because no, i think there would fine. be other moms who would be interested in doing their own kind of thing as well so obviously um they are made from acrylic and it's laser cut so what i do mm -hmm. is i do the design um obvious whatever inspires you like um my first batch that i did was um protea because i felt like you know with that south african thing mm. um I, the, a lot of what I'm influenced is obviously by South Africa and my memories as a child as well. Um, and I think the Protea, because we used to live in uh, Joburg, but then at the back was these beautiful, um, like a little bit of a mountain range in a way. Mm -hmm. um, and it had loads and loads and loads of Proteas. So our garden walked out into that and we would go and play in the felt you know, and and all of these proteas would be in the back. So that's a, a very fond memory of mine. So um, I've actually got one here. That let, let me just quickly show you. Um, so this was the first ones of the protea. I don't know if you can see. Oh, yeah, gorgeous. I love that they're it's, so it's, shiny. I, work, I do a lot of work with them. Yes, I love working with the mirror. So the mirror mm. acrylics. I love working with them um, and um, those ones have been one of our top sellers, the Protea. People love the Protea. Um, but in anyway, so what, what happens is I then draw my designs and then I have to put it into uh, Adobe Illustrator or I use Inkscape, whatever you use, a graphic design program. And then mm -hmm. from there, it gets laser cut. I sent mine away because I haven't um, been able to to afford a, a um, mm. printer yet. You know, a, a laser cutter. Um, and is that local but, in, uh, in Australia or some or overseas? Yes. So no, my stuff all gets local. So my stuff goes to New South Wales to then be cut and then it sends back. But you know what? Then you're also supporting another mum. And we've kind of built a relationship because this is not the skill that I've had. I've just kind of thought, oh, I'm going to try this. <laughs> you know? You've got to try. And, and that's one of the things that you guys did trying to come to Australia. Like you, you had a go at it and you wouldn't have known if it would have worked if you hadn't actually been here and given it a proper go. And so yes. just some, some and parting thoughts. And to persist. Exactly right. And just go for it because it's a, it is a difficult process. I know it takes a lot of time, um, but persist. If you really want to do it, it's so worth it. All, it's, all the work, et cetera, is so worth it. I mean, I constantly look back and I, I will never regret bringing my kids here. Never. And I think your kids will forever be thankful for the opportunity that they've received once they're big enough to understand what it is that mom yes. and dad have gone through. And also the other thing is that builds respect from your children to the parents by knowing that mom and dad has done this really difficult but amazing thing for them and how much yes. that's changed their lives. So thank you so much for sharing your story with us, Monique. It's been really lovely talking to you. I'm going to chat with you more offline. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for having me. It's um, our pleasure. Yeah, it's lovely. And and um, any any like last lasting any parting thoughts that you would like to leave our listeners with? Uh, any specific thing you want to say to them about coming to Australia? Um, just come, come as soon <laughs> as you can, and if you're thinking about it, do it. You won't regret it. You can always go back. True, very true. Thanks, Monique. And I hope the lockdown is over for you guys in a way. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Monique. Thanks for it's having me. It was lovely chatting to you. Thanks, you too. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. All right. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you had fun, please remember to hit that subscribe button and then it'll make sure that you never miss a thing. I'll see you same time and same place next week. Bye for now.